All right, gonna further prove that the Talmudic Jewish menorah symbol is a pagan occult symbol, and it comes from heathen religions. It has nothing to do with the Old Testament or the Holy Torah. It has everything to do with Babylonian mystical paganism. So I'm going to read this article on Hertz. So this is from a Jewish website, a Talmudic Jewish website. And again, this is not an attack on Jewish people. It's showing that their religion is occultic and demonic. But this is on Hertz. Uh, the obscure origins and evolution of the Hanukkah menorah. Ancient Jews also marked Hanukkah with fire, but the menorahs as we know today are a modern innovation. Yeah, because they got nothing to do with the Old Testament or the Holy Torah. They got everything to do with occultism and Babylonian mysticism. Hence why they're a modern innovation. But it's a ritual of fire, okay? What is, you know, hell? It's fire. It's a satanic ritual of hell, essentially. We're going to read this article on Hertz.com. Again, this is a, tum this is a uh, Jewish website, so they're, they themselves are admitting to it. On Hanukkah, Jews the world over light a menorah to commemorate a miracle that occurred at the height of the Maccabean Revolution against the Greek oppressors in the 2nd century BCE. But that is a, that is a post-fact explanation for a tradition whose origins are shrouded in mystery. When exactly Jews started lighting menorahs today, usually uh, eight branch uh, candelera, uh, candelera, candelabra, hope I'm saying that word right, uh, with a ninth shamash candle is unknown. There is no mention of menorahs in the earliest known accounts of Hanukkah, first Maccabees, which describes the rededication of the temple after a Maccabean victory and the decree uh, that the ancient uh, anniversary of the day would be would, would be a holiday, Hanukkah, nor does the text show or say how Hanukkah should be celebrated. Yeah, because it's not in scripture, okay? Maccabees is not even part of the Old Testament canon, but there's no scripture for Hanukkah, okay? It's a pagan holiday. And if someone doesn't like that, you know, if, if you're out there, if you're what, what would be called a Christian Zionist to where you uh, do not believe the Jews need Jesus Christ to be saved, then, you know, you need to get right with God. You don't have a problem with me, you got a problem with God. We're going to continue reading. Though in all likelihood, it was marked with an animal sacrifice at the Jerusalem temple, as well as other Jewish holidays at the time were celebrated. So where does the tradition of the menorah come from? Conservative Jewish authorities would have, unli would have been unlikely to create a new tradition with no biblical reference. Well, sadly, they've already done that. The Wailing Wall in Jerusalem, pagan idolatry came down in Leviticus 26 verse 1, uh, the Talmud, the Kabbalah, all that stuff. All these different rabbinical traditions have no basis in the Old Testament, have no biblical basis. But they've already created it, so it's too late for that. The more likely explanation is that Jewish households adopted the principle from, look at this, pagan ritual, following which the authorities gave the practice a Jewish explanation. After the fact, the Zoros after the fact, the Zoroastrians of Persia, Persia marked the instance, uh, or, or for instance, marked the winter solstice with the festival of fire, called uh, Chara uh, Shanbi, sorry, which predated Hanukkah and fell at the same time of the year. Uh, that or some pagan midwinter tradition influenced the Jews into lighting the f lighting fire on Hanukkah. Why? Look at this. They're getting it from a pagan ritual. Hanukkah is a pagan holiday. It's just repackaged. Uh, pre-Judaic paganism and Ju Talmudic Judaism is a pagan religion. It's got nothing to do with the Old Testament or the Holy Torah. It's an occult Babylonian mystical tradition and they themselves are admitting it. It comes from uh, heathen religion. The first to associate Hanukkah and fire is Jewish is the Jewish historian Josephus. Writing in the first century CE, some 250 years after the Maccabean revolt, he calls the holiday lights, and though admits he does not know uh, what the connection between light and the Maccabean victory is. Nor does all important compendium of Jewish law, the Mishnah, written in the early third century CE, answer this question. Yeah, the Mishnah is part of the blasphemous Talmud. The blasphemous perverted lascivious Talmud. See, they have no biblical basis for this. They're basing us off the blasphemous, lascivious, perverted Talmud. Hence why I say that Talmudic Judaism is heathen man-made tradition. It's got nothing to do with the Old Testament. In fact, the Mishnah barely mentions the holiday, and the first reference to Hanukkah, the Hanukkah menorah itself, is a, is a discussion uh, regarding tort law. If a camel knocks over the lamp, causing a fire, uh, then the rabbis say the camel driver is responsible for the lamp indoors, but if the lamp is outside the shop, the showkeeper, shoekeeper is liable. Rabbi uh, Judiah, Je Jehudiah, by the way, Matthew chapter 23 verse 8 to 9 says call no man father, or call no man rabbi. That's a title that belongs to God, not to uh, any of these heathen, Talmudic Jewish, you know, so-called rabbis, okay? Rabbi is just simply in a Hebrew word for, it's a title for God, basically.
Okay? It is not any man can be given that title. Talmudic Judaism is a pagan occult religion. We're going to continue reading the article. Uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Jehud, Jehuda provides an exception to this rule. The shopkeeper isn't liable if the lamp is a quote, a Hanukkah lamp. Possibly the Mishnah re uh, reductor, redactors chose to suppress the celebration of Hanukkah because rabbis didn't want to mark the ultimately disastrous Bar Kabbalah revolt against the Romans in 136 CE. Alternatively, they did not have approve the way of Hanukkah was being celebrated, suspecting foreign influences, especially as the holiday had not been biblically ordained. Exactly. There's no biblical basis for it. It's paganism. It's, it's rooted in Babylonian uh, mysticism. Okay, This menorah symbol is a heathen symbol. It's got nothing to do with the Old Testament. But Hanukkah is a heathen holiday. It's got nothing to do with the Old Testament. It's got nothing to do with the Bible. It's got no biblical basis. And even these lost hellbound rabbis can see that. Uh, yeah, so suspecting foreign influences. Perhaps the Mishnahic times, the holiday, was not simply considered that important. A complete uh, different theory it could be that it was so widely celebrated at the time that the rabbis saw little need to elaborate, but it seems less likely as they saw fit to elaborate on seemingly esoteric issues, such as who pays if a camel knocks over a lamb. Uh, on any case, several centuries later, the practice of lighting Hanukkah menorah, menorahs was firmly established in Jewish homes uh, and absent textual sources. Uh, it fell to the rabbis to interpret the tradition and regulate it. These traditions and regulations were codified in the Talmud, redacted 500 CE. So that there's all that right there. So they give they go down. Uh, the evolution. So here here is the evolution of the menorah itself. I'll read this part of the article. The evolution of the menorah itself, because the menorah is a heathen occult symbol. Because I've already established that Hanukkah is a, pa a pagan holiday that the Jews borrowed. Uh, because again, Talmud of Judaism is heathen man-made traditions. Got nothing to do with the Old Testament. We're going to read this part of the article, The Evolution of the Menorah Itself. Now that we have discussed the or origin of the tradition, let us turn to the evolution of the menorah itself. The earliest Hanukkah menorahs were lamps of, of clay or stone with an opening to the, on the top to pour olive oil and a, a small spout on the front for a wick. On Hanukkah, these lamps were placed at the entrance of the home on a specially uh, constructed st stand with an increasing number uh, for each of the holiday. In Talmudic times, another model appeared, a smaller mobile a version of the lamp menorahs. It was a single lamp made of clay, stone, or increasingly metal, but it had eight wick spouts instead of just one. The menorahs would further evolve in the Middle Ages. A new model appeared in the Jewish community in the 13th century Spain, some centuries before the Inquisition, and spread from there to the rest of the Jewish world. So, there's no basis of it in the scriptures, but it came hundreds of years after, I mean, thousands, like over, almost a thousand years after the completed canon of scripture. It's not scriptural at all. It's heathen man-made tradition. That's what this menorah is. These menorahs, made of metal, had an or, uh, had an ornate black wall affixed to the to the menorah on the wall, and a narrow tray on the bottom with eight dimples for oil. It was these menorahs at the, that the shamash, an additional candle, was used to light the other ones. First appeared and placed on a different pane as to differentiate it from others. And that's the end of the article right there. But um. That's what goes on. So this menorah is a pagan symbol. It comes from the pagan holiday of Hanukkah. Shamanic Judaism is a satanic, occult, Babylonian mystical religion. It's got nothing to do with the Old Testament. So don't be deceived. Uh, Talmudic Judaism was rebuked by Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. They're man-made traditions. So don't be deceived by all this uh, pro-Judaism kind of type mentality among Christian Zionists. Okay, I support the nation of Israel. I support the Jewish people. I want to see them get saved, but I do not support their false man-made religion. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.